Thanks for the introduction. So again, I'd like to welcome you as well. And I'm going to talk about SSH security and uh, where the problems with automation may be. Um, first, I give you a short introduction, then some history about remote login tools, and uh, finally discuss a few approaches for a solution. But first of all, uh, who of you is not using SSH for remote administration? Hmm, nice, no one. <laughs> okay, so do you know something like this? Warning about uh, changed keys or stuff. So the big thing is, uh, the big question is, what do you do with if you if you have some something like this? So. In a traditional environment with not too much servers and uh, the servers you, you have are just statically and you do a dist upgrade uh, over years and years, that won't happen too much. But uh, if you think about a huge environment with uh, dynamic virtualization, you come up with such message all the time. And um, it's a bad habit to ignore them. But on the other hand, you can't just disable host checking which uh, means losing some, some security features. So, some basics. Um, default authentica uh, authentication with uh, OpenSSH are password-based or key-based key authentication. Um, if you, the nice thing about uh, um, key-based authentication, it's usually not only uh, safer than password, but also uh, more comfortable if you use an, an, a key agent. Um, yeah. So, about the communication. The usual th uh, thing you, you might think about if you think about SSH is uh, you log into a machine. So that's a human-to-machine uh, communication, but there's also some not as obvious uh, communication, and that's machine-to-machine -machine communication. So in a highly automated environment, that's uh, more often the case because you just log into a, a controlling machine and uh, let this machine do all the stuff, let's say update 100 other machines. And that's a point uh, where we need to pay some attention about uh, host-to-host -host communication. So, a quick overview about the available tools. So, the first remote access tool was Telnet. It just supports uh, password-based authentication for the user. It doesn't check the identity of the hosts, and there's no encryption at all. Um, then there's a, uh, another tool, it's called R-Login. Uh, again, only password authentication for the user, but um, we have some kind of host-based verification, some kind because it just checks the source port of the server, so it's not really, uh, really as, as secure as you would like to have it. The idea behind this was um, the source port needs to be uh, below 1023, so that's uh, um, so, uh, the ports only accessible by, by root. So that might be okay, uh, have been okay in the 80s or something like that, but nowadays it isn't anymore. And of course, no encryption at all. So then we have the remote shell. Um, once again, only uh, password-based authentication for the user. Host-based authentication is kind more advanced, uh, though it checks also for the IP address. Um, that allows at least that uh, you not only, uh, so if, if you have an attack on the DNS, at least something like this could be, could be figured out. And usually uh, the remote shell is available with Kerberos, so um, you can authenticate or rely on an external source. Um, yeah. So, and last but not least, SSH. In addition to, to password-based authentication, we have also some key-based. The host-based uh, host checking is um, 
also with, with uh, keys, so it's a lot more secure. But uh, as I already told you, it brings some trouble with, uh, with it if you have a virtual, uh, virtualized environment. And everything is encrypted, so login as well as the uh, uh, connection itself. So let's discuss a few solution approaches. Again, think about an environment with one to 2,000 machines. They are all very dynamically because we at Immobilien Scout 24, we ask our developers to just create virtual machines if they need them, play around, and if they break something, just reinstall them. So um, there are virtual machines coming out of nowhere every few minutes or even a few per minute. And the same, they just disappear in the same way. So the first approach is uh, to maintain the SSH known hosts. Simply because we are a good administrator, we read some documentation, and if we read the manual page for SSH, there you can read, this file should be prepared by the system administrator to contain the public host keys of all machines in the organization. So okay, we not only read documentation, we take this serious, and we try to, to maintain this file. So that would mean to put every host into this file, deploy it, which isn't a big thing to deploy it with our, with our tool. It's called YAT, you might know it. Or there are also some Puppet and Chef and other stuff. But the thing is, you would have permanently a, a changing file need permanently to, to deploy it. So that's not a very good way to go. So next idea might be, okay, if I reinstall a system, I just, uh, before, before scratching a machine, I just take the, the private key, save it in some way, reinstall it, and inject it in, into the installation. So that at least would change the, uh, the changes for the SSH known hosts file and reduce it to just adding and removing some, some machines. But um, the thing is, a private key should be kept private and uh, moving it around, copying it around, is not a really good idea. And in addition, you would end up with a single repository with all your private keys. So I don't feel very good with this idea. And um, in addition, it's not, uh, it's not clearly how to inject such a file. So, okay, next idea. So there's something, it's called SSH uh, Key Fingerprint Resource Record for, for DNS. And that sounds really nice, because you have a, a single centralized point reachable for all the machines where you can uh, have another opinion if, if the fingerprint is uh, correct or uh, was faked. But if you take another, a, a deeper look, a second look, um, first of all, it's totally unsecure without DNSSEC. So that would mean you have to have DNSSEC. If you don't have it, on the first uh, connection, um, you would, ha uh, would end up with a question again, though, do you like to trust this machine? So that's uh, disturbing for automation. So, but even if you use DNSSEC, um, you, have, uh, you have still the question how to add entries to the DNS. And um, the server, which you connect to doesn't, uh, doesn't do a reverse lookup. So you don't have uh, a two-way authentication for the hosts. So there might be another better idea. And uh, that might be SSH with Kerberos. So instead of maintaining all the host files on your own and on all the keys on, on the machine, you rely on, on a network uh, server. Um, but there's still something. You, you, can, you can do in some way host-based authentication, but um, again, it comes up with, with, uh, with a question on the first connect, uh, connect. So you need to disable it, and uh, you're losing, again, the host-based uh, authentication. So there's an even better thing. Starting with OpenSSH 5.4, um, there was a feature implemented uh, a private, private key infrastructure. So it's uh, the quite common approach, uh, having certificates and a certificate authority. So 
it just needs you you rely on on the certificate authority by deploying the public key of this uh, certificate authority and um, you with the certificate authority signs all the host keys and you just uh, check um, check on a connection if uh, um, if it's signed correctly with with the public key and if so you just trust this host so to my mind, that's the best and the most promising approach, but there's a practical issue with it. So, as I already told you, OpenSSH came up uh, with, uh, with uh, 5.4. With the support, host-based uh, host certificate support was added with uh, 5.6, and there had been some major changes with 6.0. But um, if you have a look on all the enterprise uh, Linux distributions, uh, you will find that, for example, Red Hat comes up with uh, OpenSSH 5.3. So it's way too old. And um, there are two solutions. So wait for Red Hat 7, not the nicest way, or maintain the package on your own. So that's kind of tricky because um, it's a lot of work and uh, it's a, a security related uh, thing. So, but there's another solution for short term, and that's uh, using the remote shell with Kerberos. So, um, it's quite comparable to the SSH uh, solution with Kerberos. Uh, it also prevents man-in-the-middle attacks. Um, but the difference is uh, because you don't check the hosts on, on, on uh, with certificates, you don't get all the uh, uh, error messages and stuff like that. So instead of just disabling all the features in OpenSSH, the idea is uh, to use uh, the remote shell for the short-term solution till we can rely on uh, OpenSSH and the private key infrastructure. So that's a short overview with a short discussion of the possible solutions. And uh, yeah, I'm open for questions and discussion now. Yeah? So uh, you identified the problem with deploying the private key that if I reinstall my virtual machine, I have to get the private key from somewhere where it is stored and someone else could get that key too and fake my virtual machine. That's the point, we're not doing this. We just thought about all the possible solutions and... Um, uh, yeah, um, and now you are suggesting to use this public key infrastructure instead because this is better. And I don't see how do you generate a certificate for your public key in your freshly installed virtual machine? How does the certificate get there? So it's... Uh, um at the asymmetric uh, encryption, though you have the public and uh, private key, and you just can spread the public key without any problems. You just need to, to uh, secure your certificate authority. Uh, so I need a possibility that my freshly installed virtual machine gets a certificate from the uh, certificate authority. Yeah, of course, the public key. So, uh, the, so my problem is, yeah. uh, if I can easily obtain a valid certificate, uh, why is that any harder than just grabbing the pr uh, private key that de gets deployed into my machine? Where is the added security? So because we don't move, uh, need to move around all the private keys. So we, we have a single point where we need of trust, where we need to make sure not everybody can access it. And um, so, we assume we, we control our network, so of course, but even if not, we still control the certificate authority. So the idea is, instead of taking care for all the machines, we just have a few single machines we need to pay extra attention. And uh, the gain is we don't need to pay attention for all the thousand virtual machines. Does this answer your question? Okay, any more question? Um, if you are afraid of uh, moving uh, 
private keys around. Do you run backups on your servers? That would, another, would be another question in this scenario. So again, we're not doing this. We just, you know, we took all the ideas that might came up, come up in, in your mind and we just discussed this here. And um, it doesn't took us very long to, to, uh, to be sure we are not going this way. So moving around to the, the private keys is, you know, sounds stupid, is stupid in some way. <laughs> More questions? Is anybody here with, with uh, let's say, at least a few hundred machines to, to administrate? Or is it... So how do you solve this problem? Okay, so it's more static. So it's a traditional approach. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, if, um, that's the point. If you just install a machine and then do just upgrade or whatever over years, over years, you never have a changing uh, key. Any more questions? Okay, so thanks.